Cliff Escocés en Washington DC, tenemos hoy una oportunidad única, porque estamos combinando este evento con la dedicación de nuestro nuevo piano de cola, de concierto, Yamaha, con la rica herencia de nuestra música latina. Y es un honor de poderles presentar a los doctores Álvaro Puig y Claudia Ardila, pianistas concertistas, que nos presentarán un exitoso programa de música española y latinoamericana para piano, órgano y acordeón. Esta celebración musical también tiene un significado especial para los masones. La masonería enfatiza la importancia de buscar el conocimiento, la enseñanza en las siete artes liberales, ya que estas ayudan a hombres y mujeres a mejorarse a sí mismos, para convertirse en ciudadanos más iluminados y para contribuir al mejoramiento de sus comunidades. Una de las siete artes liberales, la quinta, es la música. Esto explica, hasta cierto punto, por qué algunas de las figuras más grandes del mundo de la música eran masones, prominentes como John Sebastian Bach, Irving Berlin, Duke Ellington, Joseph Franz Haydn, Franz Liszt y el famoso Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, para nombrar algunos. Al concluir, nuestro programa de música, los invitados a, los invitamos a una recepción organizada por la Logia Compass eh, 1811 y la Logia Alianza Fraternal Americana, la número 92, dos de nuestras logias masónicas hispanas, donde allí pueden probar un poquito de las delicadezas uh, latinas de los varios países. Y también allí tendrán la oportunidad de conocer a los artistas y hablar con nosotros y retratarse además. Así que ahora me da un gran, gran placer para presentarles al doctor Wick.
Uh, this means a lot for an artist. Uh, this is a discipline that requires a lot of time uh, and effort and resilience, the same as medicine. I have two careers, I have to tell you. So whenever I can, I take my piano to the hospital and I like to perform to my patients. Uh, they love it and I love to share this with my patients. The next piece, uh, I wanted to include it in the program because it uh, means a lot for, um, I mean, personally, of course, but uh, it's from uh, one of the best composers in Colombia, my country, I'm from Colombia. Um, and the most representative composer was Maestro Luis Antonio Calvo. Uh, in 1916, after being a very successful concert, uh, concertist and composer, and recognized by uh, you know all the society, he was diagnosed with Hansen's disease, leprosy. And by order from the government, all these people that were diagnosed with this condition, they were supposed to be recluded in specific places, uh, and they were supposed just to be in there. Basically, something similar to what we have recently. But in, in, his, case, in his case, actually, he remained for the rest of his life. So imagine a hundred years ago what meant this for a composer. Uh, that was something. And this was the first piece that he composed in Agua de Dios, Cundinamarca, El Leprocomio de, de Cundinamarca en Agua de Dios. Eh, my, my, my goal, I think, also is to try to promote Colombian music with you know, uh, future generations. Uh, and I'm very happy to say that I actually am helping to restore his piano uh, somehow with, uh, with some of uh, governmental organizations in Colombia. So his piano actually you know, so went to life again. Um, and he composed this intermezzo number two, Lejano Azul.
I also want to extend uh, uh, my gratitude with the Washington DC Scottish Rite for opening this space uh, for us Hispanic, trying to show how rich and how diverse is our culture. Certainly is very important. So thank you very much to Mr. Paul Dolinsky, another fantastic pianist and organist, a close friend of mine, and also to Mr. Len Proven. Thank you very much for this invitation. The next piece that I'm gonna play is very special. If you've seen your program, the name is Soy Colombiano. And of course, it's special because yo soy Colombiano. <laughs> Pero también es muy especial porque eh, I want to tell you something. Uh, I also belong to a group of musicians that are uh, doctors. It's called the Music Medical Group. And they perform for different, uh, you know, you know, they have a lot of venues in the DMV and different places. So uh, I, I was asked actually to play at the Capitol building one time a solo, you know, a piano solo. So I said, well, maybe I can play some Chopin, some Bach, something like that. I said, excuse me, but can I play whatever I want? They said, yes, you can play whatever you want. I said, I'm going to play Colombian music. But what is going to be something that is going to be very representative? So I decided to do a piano arrangement. This is my own piano arrangement uh, on this particular bamboo. Usually is, this is playable in guitar, in tiple, bandola. Those are the... the, the, the you know, typical instruments of Colombia. Um, but in the piano, you don't hear a version like that because actually it has some lyrics. Well, whoever knows the lyrics, please go ahead and, you know, you can sing it as well, you know. Um, but, uh, so I performed this and it was, everybody loved it. And as well, during COVID, uh, I decided to record this bambuco for my friends in Colombia. And I knew about how powerful for our social media because everybody started, you know, sending and sending and sending and sending this video converted into a snowball to the point that even the people from the government, very happy people from the government in Colombia actually promoted this video to stay home. My, my, my slogan was, please stay home. We stay in the hospital to get, take care of you. You take care of us staying home. And I, I'm going to play something for you for, to stay home. And apparently actually also was, was, uh, was something special. So, ¿cuántos son colombianos acá? Hay bastantes colombianos. Aquí veo una colombiana que me enorgullece mucho y la, la quiero mucho. ¿Ah? Perfecto, ok. Sí.
next piece, um, I wanted to include it in here. Also, it's a very famous piece in my country. Uh, but I wanted to uh, give a tribute to one uh, one of a kind pianist that we had in Colombia, Maestro Oriol Rampilla. And the story is very interesting because he was a very good pianist uh, in the National Conservatory of Music, but he liked to play Colombian music. And at that moment, it was totally banned for you to be in the conservatory. Playing you know, popular music was like a, something that, you know, Please don't do it. You know that's that's something that you know doesn't have any type of, of acceptance. So uh, so basically, he was uh, you know his his uh, recital to receive his uh, diploma. Uh, they, he was assigned classical music, the regular Chopin, Mozart, Beethoven, all of those things. But he said, I will play the program if in the middle I can play Brisas del Pamplonita, and then I continue playing the regular classics. So the, the people, his teachers, told him, no, no, you cannot mix this music with the classical music. You cannot do this. Please don't do so. So he said, well, if, if, it's, if I don't play that one, I don't care about the diploma. I don't, I mean, I don't want to have the diploma. And they said, well, so you won't get graduated. So he said, whatever. And he went. He left the, the conservatory without playing his recital. Later on, he was the main pianist for all the radio stations in Bogota, Medellin, everywhere in, in, in Colombia, performing Colombian music in the piano. So now it's a little bit ironic that the main classical pianists that we have are trying to perform the same bambuco that he was banned, and they mix with you know this this music, and everybody loves it, you know. So so I'm gonna play. Honoring Maestro Oriorno Gel Brisa de Palomita.
the, the National uh, Hispanic Heritage Month is in this uh, you know month of the year. This, do, do you guys know what is the reason? Do you know? Somebody knows? September 15. And what happened September 15? Huh? So so yeah so it's early is complete. That's probably why. So actually, you know, it's, it's, it's related to the independence of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Mexico now. So I, I want to play something from Mexico uh, that is very traditional as well. It's like the cucaracha, like, uh, you know, all those things. But, you know, I, you know I, I'm working still on, the, on this arrangement for the cucaracha. <laughs> so, so, yeah. uh, so I decided to do this arrangement myself in, um, in the one uh, that is uh, La Llorona. Uh, the translation is the weeping lady, I guess it is. Uh, but it's in a traditional story of this mother that is crying because of the kids and all those things. And this is actually a traditional story, actually, you know, is from the 1800s. Um, I was not able to identify who was the composer of this one. What I knew actually is that there is this poet, like in last century, actually, he did some of the uh, lyrics, but I truly don't know who is the, who is the composer of this. So, with the respect for the Mexican people that are in the audience, and for everybody as well, La Llorona.
Perú. ¿Hay gente de Perú aquí? ¿No? De el maestro Augusto Polo, el vals, sí, Polo Campo, muy bien, el vals limeño. Moleiro Joropo. 